Dave Kirpin, serial entrepreneur, New York Times bestselling author. It is truly a treat. Co-founder of Likeable Media, Dave Kirpin. What are your thoughts on what you're hearing right now, especially out of San Francisco? Well, of course, I'm uh, saddened uh, to hear about uh, the uh, the attack on uh, the Cash App uh, creator. It's very, very, very sad, and I'm I'm, I'm always saddened to hear about uh, what um, what you've been through, Jonathan. You and I go way back, and um, you're you're an excellent journalist. And I hate to see uh, I hate to see you as a as a victim here. Uh, you know, in the in New York, where I where I live, uh, we've definitely seen a, an uptick in crime in the city. Uh, poverty. I mean, I'm definitely no expert on this topic, but in my experience, the pandemic exacerbated a uh, the disparity in wealth, and and um, poor folks are uh, turning to crime. I mean, that that story is not a new story. So we, we've seen that over and over again. And uh, when people are poor, they uh, end up uh, turning to crime, and and uh, it's a it's a difficult cycle. And I certainly don't have the answers to it, but but I think cities are are, are have some challenging uh, times ahead. So look, you're an entrepreneur. You're successful by all accounts. How do you operate in this type of environment then, just as an entrepreneur? Right, you you're still in your New York City. You know that's that's your urban core. You have to deal with this. We're seeing all the attacks on the subways as well, Dave. Right. I mean, everyone's reporting on that. This stuff is happening. How do you function? How do you run a business like this? Well, at the risk of being short, I, I don't take the subway. <laughs> I, uh, you know, I, 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 I focus on, you know, first and foremost, keeping my, my, my family safe and, and, and keeping me safe. And um, uh, we, 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 this is a, perhaps another topic, but, but we've, we've uh, made our businesses essentially work from home uh for the most part and um that's where people feel safest and uh, that's that's certainly fine by me uh, that's, that's a good point dave uh and for those people who don't know dave's background i mean he's a real, real true social media expert and there's been such a transition i think you brought up the pandemic uh, I, I think social media has also caused some of these changes uh in in our society the way people react to things uh so dave was at the forefront of facebook and that revolution that Facebook set in now, that might be old tech for some of our viewers and, and listeners now, obviously for those people that are on TikTok and some of these newer technologies. But uh, Dave, Connect, going back to that era, like you were one of the first folks to embrace Facebook as it was really starting to go nuclear viral across the globe. And where we are today, you know, like a decade later with social media, with TikTok, with Twitter, uh, we've had this kind of change. Uh, give us your thoughts on just social media over the years and where we are now well things change things change uh, relatively quickly it's funny because uh you were um you were uh, i saw in the in, in the show notes we were talking about what's going on with TikTok, and 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 of course there are some folks that are saying uh uh there's no way TikTok or twitter can um can uh go away because of the network effect but um but myspace went away and uh, Friendster went away, and Facebook basically Meta, the company, obviously, obviously is still here, but Facebook usage has gone way, way, way down. And so, in fact, the only thing I do know is that eventually TikTok will be no more, and uh, Twitter will be no more. So it's really just a matter of time, right? The the world changes, the world evolves. Um, you know, people people uh, people would have said uh, in the 1990s that Blockbuster is never going away, but we all know what happened. And so um, I think for me, it's been really exciting to be on the cutting edge, as you mentioned. Um, but I don't take anything for granted in terms of the the uh, the longevity of things, because with the with, as technology continues to evolve, the rate of acceleration continues to uh, uh, continues to go up and up and up. So things are changing even faster than ever before, which is both very exciting and also very scary and overwhelming for a lot of folks. I, I want to I want to follow up though, Dave. I mean, do you think the way social media is today? I, you know, I, I'm old enough to know what MySpace is, Friendster, Facebook, and this iteration. Do you think social media has gotten to a point where you again, everyone has a cell phone, everyone's consuming so much media, whether it's you know YouTube or one of these social uh, apps to to connect with other people? Has it changed our society where we're getting we have shorter tempers? People are getting violent. We have a pandemic. 
can you connect some of this together? Because I, I feel as if a lot of folks got stuck at home for two years. We have, you know, some people will have the fortunate uh, ability to work from home and other folks had to be there on the job in PPE, uh, you know, fighting for their lives, uh, you know, potentially getting infected by, uh, infected by a coronavirus. I mean, it, it's been a really trying time uh, for our society. I mean, this has social media played a role in, in where we are right now. Sure. Well, you know, the, the way I would connect it, um, and, 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 and I'll, I'll sort of talk about the, the emergence of another big social network, uh, uh, Be Real, uh, the way I will connect it is that, uh, is that with, with social media, people see highlight reel. So people see people's best, best moments. That's what they're sharing on, on Instagram and TikTok, uh, previously Facebook and, the, and, and, and other social networks. You're seeing you're seeing a collection of highlight reels, and if you're if you're watching a highlight reel, whether you're a teenager, which which there's been a lot in the media about, or frankly an adult, um, you're always comparing yourself and your life to the very very best moments from other people's lives. Well, imagine if you're having a tough day, tough month, tough year, tough few years uh, in terms of the pandemic. Uh, you got you got laid off, uh, your husband or wife. Uh, also maybe lost their job, uh, you had to downsize. There, there are many, many ways that people have been impacted very negatively in the last few years. Now imagine that every single day, every single time you log in on your phone, you're seeing everyone else's highlight reel. Well, it's no wonder that not only have, have we dealt with increasing teenage uh, uh, depression and, 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 and mental health issues and, and suicide, but adults struggling with crime, with drugs, with lots of the, what I would call sort of negative impact of the world. And social media has played a role in that because people are comparing their own lives to the highlight reels that are out there. Now, what's interesting about the emergence of Be Real is uh, the idea behind it as a social network is to intentionally not capture people's highlight reel, but capture just a, just a random moment in people's days and I think there's something really to be said for that. And people are, are, are it's catching on because people actually don't, there's a, there's a, there's an element of the, the, the rest of social media where, where people don't like that highlight reel. You know, Dave, um, you talked about be real. I, I totally forgot about that platform. I'm still trying to figure out what TikTok is. Okay. So, you know, I'm primarily on Twitter. I think a lot of the elites and, and news folks, right? The academics, they're still on Twitter. Okay. You've got Gen Z, the millennials, the youngsters, they're on TikTok. I think Instagram is still stable. Like you said, you have Facebook kind of seen as one of the elder statesmen. Then you've got Be Real, and then you've got a, a Discord, and you've got all these others. Where, where, what would you say are the three most influential social media platforms right now? I, I don't even know if that's a fair question or how, if you even see it that way. How should well, we be yeah, seeing? I mean, I think, uh, I think it's an interesting question. I, I, I think the true answer really lies on who's asking the question in terms of influential on whom and for what audience, um, mm -hmm. you know, to your point, um, a lot of the elites are on Twitter, but how, how important is that beyond, um, beyond the elites? I think in many ways, and I'm a huge fan of Twitter. I've been on Twitter since the beginning, but in many ways, uh, it's an eco chamber of, 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 of media and, uh, marketers talking to each other. I mean, the, 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 the um, the question I like to ask when considering the societal impact of a social network and really how influential it is in the moment is, this may seem funny, but is your mom on the network? The answer to the question of is your mom on Twitter is no. No, your mom's not on Twitter. <laughs> is, your no, mom on, uh, is your mom on TikTok? Maybe, actually. Um, is your mom? On Instagram, yes. So based on the mom question, Instagram is the most influential social network. Maybe LinkedIn as well. Certainly, um, that's where um, just about every professional is at this point. And don't sleep on LinkedIn. Some people don't consider it a social network. But um, actually, I'm going to go ahead and say that if I had to answer that in my head, I would say LinkedIn um, is the most influential. And then uh, and then wow. Instagram um, and, 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 and TikTok, because those are most likely to pass that mom test. Interesting, as that being the standard. Okay. Uh, Dave, do you think people are being desensitized 
to all this violent crime because of social media. Like I see, I think one thing that's happened with political coverage, I, I do a lot of political coverage, an episode that Jonathan's covering in Seattle, right? And all the stuff that Jonathan does, people see that in Florida. People see that in Texas. People see that in Ohio. And it influences the discourse in those states and vice versa. And it, it, it gives talking points to the right and talking points to the left. And then, of course, you're talking about, again, the elites using social to blast the other side because they saw some episode of whatever happened in Alabama or whatever happened in Tennessee and, and, or New York City. And this is how we're kind of shouting at each other uh, at this point. Yeah, I mean, I think people have become desensitized. I, I don't, I don't know how new of an issue it is. I don't think it's an issue that's that's new in the last couple of years. I think, I think, um, you know, it's gotten worse and worse. And with with cable cable news, we saw the first revolution uh, revolution in sort of the twenty four seven cycle of, of 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 seeing these stories that ended up um, desensitizing people, and then social media social media um, amplified it that much more. And then um, the only the only the only real change in the last couple of years in, is less uh, uh, cable news because it's already been there, and less social media because it's already been there, and more the impact of the pandemic. Again, frankly, I think it's just it's just created a, a greater disparity in, in in wealth, and and it's um, it's just a it's just it's a lot of people walking around with, with a lot of issues, and um, the me- mental health crisis is the the worst I think it's, it's ever been in my lifetime. It, uh, so the so 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 yeah, we've been de- we've certainly been desensitized. I mean, how can anyone not say we've been desensitized when there are school shootings all the time, for instance, that people don't even you know bat an eye anymore? I mean, that's just insanity to me, but it's a reality, right? So it's un- it's very unfortunate. Well, Dave, at the end of the day, you know Kapoor and I are news guys, right? So at the end of the day, content is king. But we started off in the TV world. Be real. <laughs> Be honest. When you ask your peers, your colleagues, e- even yourself, do you still consume news from the television sets? I mean, where do you get most of your news at this point now? Yeah, so I, 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 I get a little news from TV, not a lot. Uh, I'm getting my news online. I'm getting my news through through Twitter, through social, and I'll tell you with a hundred percent certainty that my children. Uh, ranging in age from uh, 7 to 20, 7, 15, and 20, they're getting their news from TikTok and YouTube. Wow. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so um, it's, it's, it's an evolution. And so you just have to, like, not be an old fart and fight it, <laughs> as, as we old folks tend to do, but embrace it and really understand the direction that folks are going in. So give us some quick insight, right? As we kind of wrap, I want to I want to get a few more questions in, but what you've always been two three steps ahead right i mean that's how you've been essentially relevant in so many ways people turn to you now for advice you you have been giving people advice for a very long time but you know ai right and social media i mean this is what are you working on next where do you recommend we all need to be and where do we need to be focusing on before it blows up right what do you think is going to going to happen next yeah i i mean i think um I think it's been in the news quite a bit, and yet I think most people, if I think of, again, the mom test or the uh, my poker club, uh, the 20 guys that I see every 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 Friday night and play, play cards with, um, folks do not realize yet the full potential of GPT and uh, the language learning models, chat GPT being the most sort of famous in the news now, but um, but Google's uh, Bard is, is 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 right around the corner as a, as a major competitor, and what GPT can do is absolutely um, revolutionary. I mean, when Elon Musk and other technologists are saying "stop the technology," you know that this this is really really crazy stuff. And I firmly believe I'm building a, a new company uh, uh, in um, in AI called uh, Kip.ai, and I firmly believe. That what we are witnessing, what we will witness in the next 24 months is a revolution equal in in uh, impact to the industrial revolution and the internet. So anyone that thinks that social media represented a revolution in the way we communicate, I believe that GPT is going to be that much bigger a revolution. Not since the internet have we seen something that will 
impact the world so much. And it's both very, very exciting as, a, as an entrepreneur and as a technologist. And it's very, very scary, of course, as a, as a, as a consumer, because, you know, it's the sort of science fiction that we, we only dreamed about, about robots taking over the, wor over the world suddenly seems a lot more realistic now. Uh, Dave, what aspect of AI are you going to be tackling? Because there's so many folks that are trying to, you know, build things to integrate with open AI. Yeah, we're working, we're working specifically with uh, enterprise. Um, the, the, the speed of acceleration is so absurd that any large organization doesn't have the bandwidth, the, 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 the ability to be nimble enough to make changes. I mean, we're talking about GPT-4 came out two weeks after GPT-3.5. We're talking about major, major evolution and acceleration literally every week. And enterprises have no idea how to handle this. It's, 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 I mean, how could they? How could an organization of thousands of employees or tens of thousands of employees possibly react fast enough to keep up with the changing pace of technology and AI? So for me, um, what, what we're doing to, to help these folks keep up um, is building cycles of of, of iterative products and consulting and briefing that allows large enterprises to stand a chance. I, 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 I promise you, timestamp this, timestamp this, uh, this segment because 24 months from now, you will see a major reshuffling of the Fortune 500. The largest reshuffling of the Fortune 500 in any two-year period in the history of the Fortune 500. And it will be based on how quickly large enterprises react and adapt to the changing opportunities and challenges that AI presents. So you think it was a big deal when Blockbuster went under? Watch as the Fortune 500 is completely reshuffled based on who can adapt and react fast and who is slow coming out of the gate. And Dave, I got to ask you really quick, what do you think this does to the news industry, right? We know that, you know, television stations, legacy media, newspapers, radio, they're still around, but they're still trying to figure out how do we stay, get relevant online? What do you think this will do to news gathering and even the reporting and, and consuming? Well, it's a good question. Like, like many things, it will be absolutely disrupted. Um, there will be lots of opportunities for uh cameras i imagine to capture news and for uh ai to help analyze uh news write segments write 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 uh uh aspects uh, i'll give you an example you know as i'm a published author i've written quite a bit i can tell chat gbt to write an article or a book in the voice of dave kirpin and based on my previous writing, it can actually, t and, and, and given an input of a headline, it can actually write the whole thing. And not only is it well written, I'd like to think, but it's actually literally written in my voice. So imagine the impact on, on, um, on news, same way, write, write an article, here's the headline, and write it in, in, in this voice. Um, write it with a slight liberal bias. Write it with a unnoticeable conservative bias. I mean, the, the, the implications are, are, are dramatic when you think about the opportunity that um, AI can understand what's out there and, um, and uh, create, essentially create and distribute the news. Scary stuff, Ravi. Lots of products. Yeah, and exciting too. I mean, again, I'm, I'm in San Francisco. We we're talking about some of the horrific crime out here, but nine of the top 10 AI startups in this country are in San Francisco and this place is on fire. And in fact, you know, the South Bay is actually too far. All of it is in San Francisco proper and all these venture capitalists and people who've done big things over the last 10, 20 years, they're out of touch and they're heading to San Francisco to see what the kids are doing. And they're, uh, I mean, it's, they had like a 5,000 person party uh, talking AI last Friday night, spontaneous kinds of, kinds of efforts. So no matter what you say about this place that I live in, 
uh, San Francisco is going to be leading the charge on AI. And, uh, and that's why we got to, you know, talk about these things. And I'm so glad, David, you're getting in the space because it's, it's massive. And I have a close friend of mine that has been working on AI for seven years and we haven't seen anything yet. Like this is just the start. So Dave, any, uh, any final ahead. thoughts, man? I know it's super late on the uh, East Coast, so thank you for staying up with us. But any last closing thoughts on your end about just kind of everything we've been talking about this evening? I think Ravi hit the nail on the head. Um, the, the world is um, uh, at, its, at, at one of its scariest and most overwhelming uh, 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 places, but it's also at its one of its most exciting places in, 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 in that I can remember. And uh, I, I personally like to choose the positive and, and, and choose, uh, choose excitement and opportunity. Maybe that's the entrepreneur in me, but I always like to, to look at opportunities that are out there versus uh, uh, doom and gloom. So yes, a lot of scary things, a lot of very overwhelming things going on. You talked about that in your earlier segment, but um, also lots of opportunity for uh, improvement in the world and advancement in technology and advancement in knowledge. And I get, I get super excited about those, those, those things as well. Dave right. Kirpin, likable media co-founder, New York times, bestselling author and serial entrepreneur. Thank you again for your generosity and your friendship. And a man who cannot go into retirement at all. Right, Dave, <laughs> like you just keep, Never. keep churning out startups. Uh, keep selling day. those companies, Dave. <laughs> Never. You know, my financial planner said to me, he was doing a motto. He said, I need a retirement age for you. And my wife said, uh, 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 55, she wants to retire, uh, you know, in the next 10 years. And um, I said, no, I don't want to put an age. And he said, no, no, I need an age for my model. I said, all right, put 120. <laughs> all right. Now, and he has the uh, answer for living to 120 as well, ladies and gentlemen. Dave Kirpin, <laughs> take care. Thanks. Good to see you, Dave. Thanks, man.